and welcome back to Biblio Fitness. Hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving. Uh, made a lot of gains, had some great time with family and such. Um, yeah, uh, Mel was uh, just a uh, pretty chilling Thanksgiving. Got home uh, quite early. Um, I'm an early bird, so uh, wasn't able to stay for too long, but great fucking food, even though you know the company is quite suspect. Yeah, we'll leave it. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> um, but today, um, I kind of got a an inclination to do a video. Of this the subject of this video. Um, I've been. I'm listening to a wonderful uh, stream on Robert E. Lee by Apostolic Majesty alongside uh, Charlemagne on YouTube. Check it out. It's really good. I haven't. I haven't listened to the whole thing. I'm still in the process, but. You know, they made an interesting point in the very beginning of the video as to, you know, the deconstruction of modern society, right? Like how we, we in our current moral uh, um, presumptions um, look back into the past as we're fucking children, as if we didn't know any better, we were stupid, barbaric, how could we be such... Uh, 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 ruthless individuals you know that's not what we should do uh, progress is towards a more egalitarian more utilitarian society um you know and we you know with the recent tearing down of the robert e lee statue um they decided to make a stream about the man you know a very complicated man a, 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 and a, a man with amazing repute, you know, a noble, aristocratic man, um, but that has been attached to slavery because he fought for the Confederacy um, in the American Civil War, obviously. But, you know, it just leads me to think like how deconstruction really does work and, you know, and that, you know, deconstruction really is possibly the only logical conclusion that can be derived from allowing peasant morality to to supersede that of the aristocrats and I, and I know that speaks against me right because I'm what one may call from peasant stock I'm, you know but it's the fact you know like the, the way that we have reconstructed deconstructed and reconstructed our moral presuppositions the way we look at the world it has caused irrevocable damage um, and it will probably not live as long as the aristocratic way and you know and and reason that all ties into deconstruction is because with our new moral values that of the sufferer um that of the slave that of the one that needs others to perform the actions for them um this is the only way that you can go you know you we we have become so sensitive and so effeminized that we can't look at we can't look at lens. I mean, we can't look at things in a complicated, abstract form because we've become materialist. Um, and I'm starting to realize those the, the heavy ramifications for going down this road. But this is something that was prophesized by Nietzsche, I guess you could say. I don't know if prophesized would be an appropriate word for a man like him. But, I mean, I guess it kind of would. It kind of would. But these are the difficult times ahead of us. But, you know, that what, that, what I mean is that, like... Like, we look at the past as barbaric. We look at the past, you know, with, you know, the big slavery thing and, and conquest and, you know, how, you know, museums of other countries have artifacts from other countries because of these conquests. And we look at these things as deplorable. We look at these things as, you know, we can go about the world and continue on this effort of civilization without the means of war, without the means of... and and all the effects that, that 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 prop up because of these engagements you know as, as heraclitus so famously says war is progress um it's necessity that is the mother of invention right um you know we you could see it at us like that's what happens when there is no longer any necessity in in the equation we have dropped off precipitously in terms of talent, in terms of ingenuity, in terms of, uh, of creativity, of arts, of, uh, the way that we express ourselves emotionally and in an abstract way has become 
ridiculous, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, you could see the effects of that. You could see the effects of what happens when you preach or when you reach for this, this, this utopia on earth. Um, it just, you know, deconstruction is just the most toxic thing in the fucking history because it re wants to reduce history. It wants to abolish it. It wants to destroy it um, because it just shows how things really are. Um, and politicians and, their, and being far more adept at this than we are um, have obviously taken advantage of this wave of woke politics and woke capital and such and um, imbeciles still buying and voting for things that are against them. But um, it's not that easy to fool the crowd, is it not? Um, you know, I, I, you know, I don't really know much about Robert Lee Lee, but you know, they always want to deconstruct people. You know, they always want to call this person racist, or we shouldn't read this person because they did this. And it's like, bro, we're complicated individuals, and I always think it's such a stupid endeavor to moralize our predecessors. Like, what do you know about that, those times and what they held to be absolute? What they held to be indisputable absolute truth or what it is to be good and bad, you know, what their upbringing is and their culture. Like, who the hell are we to look back on that and, and cast those sort of, sort of judgments without having any understanding of that world to begin with and how can we possibly relate we're creatures of our own time well, you know unfortunately uh, you know it's so ridiculous the the endeavors that we waste our times on nowadays in this in this in this ridiculous endeavor to destroy everything and rid everything of what uh, you know this resentment and this envy and this Misery loves company mentality. Um, trying to rid of it all. And it started with the French Revolution, of course. You know, with the death of many aristocrats. But, you know, it's not like aristocrats did not do anything bad either, obviously. Um, but mass, the masses is, is not a good way to, 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 to regulate what we need to do you can't do that it's just not an inclination it's just not how we work we're always going to be inclined to follow a select individuals who are clearly more qualified than us and you know what i'm saying there is talent and you know this you know wanting to even deconstruct and, and destroy biology because it runs contrary to their beliefs it's like aren't you doing the same shit that your supposed enemies did all these centuries um so are you really better than them? Because you're on their same level. You're really, literally doing the same thing. You know, it's so obvious the hypocrisy. It's so obvious the strings. Once you finally are able to see them, that you know, we repeat the same cycles over and over again. It just reminds us that we're all the same dumbasses. Um, at the end of the day, we're just different upbringings. And obviously, that's a gross oversimplification. That we're not. We're not all the same. But we all have the same or very similar inclination we obviously obviously express them in limitless ways limitlessly contrasting ways of course um but yeah man and clearly all this shit has really gone to my uh, to my head but you know it, you know history is complicated and history is built by people who have piles of bodies mountains of bodies on their way to victory on their way to creating their kingdom. You know, it's like Griffith from Berserk. I have to bring him up because he's, he's a very complicated character as well. Um, who knows what he's really up to. But, uh, you know, Alexander the Great, who brought, you know, Greek civilization to the East and this intermingling that was so dynamic and it was so paramount and it was so absolute you know what i'm saying like even when the romans came in they didn't fuck with it you know that's what the bible was for the christian bible the new testament was first written in, in greek um you know people have had to die people have had to you know there's these topics that to our minds to our very feminine and sensitive minds is beyond conversation you know 
you walk into a party and start talking about these things, people are gonna be like, "Bro, what the fuck are you talking about? What do you like?" Like no one ha- no one has the courage to ask these questions. No one, everyone thinks it's icky. Everyone thinks it's disgusting, and you know it's beyond my dignity to broach and to entertain you such conversations. Like you're an imbecile. What are you talking about, bro? Um, you know, but that's our morality now, and that's why we look at all these things as not necessary, but as evil, as it's, you know, it's a reminder of how barbarous we are, and it's only through progress and science and current morality that we'll be able to uplift everybody and distribute the wealth and this and this and this and this and this and this and this. And this. <sighs> uh, I don't know how you cannot be a cynic to everything that I just quoted from them at this point, but whatever. Um, you know, it's a shame doing all these things because then the histories that will be written after this will be heavily biased. And this will be considered a black period, I guess you could say, for historians. Like, why would you want to read anybody, anything from a lot of these people when it comes to um, history and how they, you know, everything is being rewritten. Everything's being reinterpreted before our very eyes and being, you know, repackaged as the new truth. And, um, it's just not done eloquently. It's not done subversively. It's not done intelligently, you know, through culture. I mean, well, they have done it through culture, but that's a whole nother fucking story. That's a whole nother rabbit hole that we're going to be here all day. <laughs> but, you know, it's, you know, um, that's it's that's what really is crazy. You know, if you really look at it, that's one aspect that you can see the hypocrisy that we are all about human progress and dignity. But we condone music that's absolutely abhorrent, uh, music that runs completely contrary and actually throws gasoline on the fire that we're supposedly trying to 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 contain. You know what I'm saying? Violence and sex and drugs and, and all these things that make us the savages that we are. Um, it's quite interesting how hypocritical it all is, but... Um, it all is a plan, you know, um, I am one of those conspiracy theorists that I feel like if you get enough people, you can do all these things, because guess what, it's been done before, you know, people always want to treat people who believe that, you know, a certain small group of men could possibly run everything, it's like, yes, you can, it's been done before, yeah, on a smaller scale, but they didn't have the technology and the globalization of the world economy as it is today. You're telling me that people can't come up with that? People can't come together and be like, all right, how do we really, really put the foot down on these fucking peasants? Um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I don't even think those, those, they can no longer be considered conspiracy because even with the elite, even with the talented, there has been a dissipation in, ta- in, that, in that pool, in that genetic pool. It's happened across all spectrums. It's ha- happened across all ethnicities. It's happened across all over the world. I really do believe that. Um, that that suffering and that that dire need and that war and that all that suffering and that what we consider to be, you know, unnecessary and deplorable. Those are the great. Those were the strifes, and those were the moments that created the greatest works of art. You know, the greatest books or the greatest inspiration for novels and move and you know what i'm saying like portraits of war is fucking crazy or general and stuff like that you know these guys were inspirations you know the the moment of suffering the needing of suffering to turn a boy into a man for example you know the baptism of fire you know what the you know how people are obsessed with the spartans look at their training boys have to go through hell they could die it's, it's not going easy on them just because they're six or seven years old. You know, us nowadays believing that 13, 14 year old boys um, are just little boys is because of our common more preconceptions and how easy life has gotten. At 14 years old, back a thousand years ago, you were going to send out to war. You were going to train. You were going to get put into the military and go on campaign for three months in the spring. That's what you were going to do. Three to six months, depending on where you were. But that's how it was. Um, but look at the men it created. And look at the men created today. 
wearing dresses and all that other stuff and no longer believing that, you know, there should be a distinction between men and women and it's a human construct, bro. It's like, you guys are fucking stupid. It, just because it's a human construct does not make it, it does not invalidate the, the, the truth of it, you know? The entirety of your being is a human construct. Civilization itself is a human construct. Civilization is an abstraction of biological and evolutionary processes. That's why there is a distinction between men and women. Men and women shouldn't be having fucking body... Whatever. Now I'm going off on a tangent. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm milking this out far, than, far more than it's worth. So I'm going to go ahead and drink some more of this substance and get to some reading. And get, you know, I got my, I got my laptop. So very soon we'll be start recording from there. I'm going to be purchasing a microphone. It's time to upgrade. Um, I made the investment for a nice Acer uh, laptop, uh, gaming laptop. It's very good. It's 16 gigs of RAM, uh, 512 gigs of SSZ. Um, I think it's two point something gigs on the CPU. Um, so pretty good, pretty good. A pretty good processor from Intel. I think it's the Intel i7. Um, and you gotta start fucking around with it. I'm gonna start working into it. I'm gonna purchase Windows 11 Pro so I could start getting the hang of everything. Um, you know, I wanna start looking for work, so I'm gonna have to get on my resume, um, start building on my resume. But first, I'm gonna really fuck around with the computer, get used to it, get knowing everything, getting my hands, you know, getting used to the functions. Um, it's a great time to be alive. Um, I'm making progress little by little. I'm still fucking up here and there, but gotta keep working and gotta keep trying. Um, you know, the other, all the other option is to quit. And by quitting, I might as well kill myself because I don't want my life to be where it is. Um, and I don't mean that in a financial way. It's just, uh, I could be so much better. I could be so much more. Um, I see him. I see the ideal. I see the shadow of it, though. You know, I haven't fully, fully formulated it because I haven't gotten any closer to it yet. Uh, but I'm starting to see the shadow um, it's just going to require more searching. It's going to require more suffering. But um, that'll be all for today. Hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all have a great day. Hope you all make some beautiful games. If the gym continues to be dead as fuck. Uh, I'm going to hit the gym early. I didn't go yesterday. Because it opened at 7 o'clock in the morning. And I wasn't going to deal with that. Even though I probably could have gone, like, now that I think about it retrospectively, I was kind of being a bitch. Because uh, how many people are really going to show up to the gym on a Black Friday? How many people are going to show up today? Probably not, because uh, people are hungover. Uh, but whatever. Love y'all. Hope y'all make a great day out of this. And until next time.